Welcome to NinjaCast, a photography podcast powered by Studio Ninja, the world's highest rated business management app built specifically for photographers. Listen and learn as the most successful photographers on the planet share their knowledge to help you transform every element of your photography business. Here's your host, Sally Shaw. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of NinjaCast. Today I am joined by Kai Coombs. Now Kai has a little bit of a niche that he's going to speak to us all about today. Kai is the world's only remote shooting underwater photography studio. I know, right? Mind blown. I'm mega excited for this one. This is like nothing we've ever brought to you before. We're gonna drill down into how to market for such a intricate niche, how you can then transfer that to your own businesses, and also how he even makes what he does work. Let's get started. Hi Kai, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Amazing. Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. I, uh, I'm i really excited for today's. Our listeners are not going to know what's hit them after this episode, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> no, it's going to be something a bit different for them. There's there's not a lot of stuff out, like, out there like this. Absolutely. It's, it's really, really unique what you do. So, I mean, can you tell us a little bit about your journey in the photography industry, kind of your career so far yeah, and, sure, and let our listeners in it's, on your secret? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite convoluted and all, of, all over the place. Um, I started way back um, when I was significantly younger than I am now. Um, <laughs> I first kind of got into photography when my uh, mum gave me a broken Minolta 35mm camera to play wow. with when I was about two, three years old. Uh, and somehow, as a toddler, I managed to fix it and give it back to her working. <laughs> <laughs> And it just kind of went from there. I got my first cam- like actual camera, which is a bridge camera. It was a, a Fuji uh, when I was 12. Um, and it just kind of went from there. In my kind of teenage years, I did a, a lot of urban exploration. I traveled all over Europe, all around the country. Um, and kind of when I hit, I think, 18, 19, I did that thing where you go, you know what? I, I'm relatively all right at this. I'm going to try and make some money out of it. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of tried to, to make a career out at the time. I did all the things that... I thought I should get into, so I did, you know, weddings and portraiture, and I did a fair bit of equestrian as well. Um, and I did that for a couple of years, and I kind of, I, I lost the kind of creativity in it. Mm-hmm. I kind of fell out of love with it a little bit because I just felt like I was making images for other people rather than making it for myself. Yeah. And I burnt out and then reapplied it in other things. So my main background is kind of more in, in marketing than photography, or was at the time. That was my kind of career. Ah. Um, okay. I, but I kind of have used photography and videography and reapplied it um, throughout my career. So I've never really stopped taking photos. It's, it's kind of been an ongoing theme. And then in the last kind of three, four years, this is what I've dedicated. So I'm now uh, an underwater photographer, but with a difference rather than, you know, going out into the sea, I have uh, an underwater studio, which is is very different from the norm. So this happened almost entirely by accident. Um, I actually run another company, which is an events company, where we tour around the, the UK uh, with a big portable aquarium with mermaids in it. Um, mm. And that was kind of the thing that we set up um, and had the tank built for. And then one day I was taking photos in it for our own promo. And I was like, you know what? Actually, this would be really cool. And we created a whole new business for it. And then it just exploded. I never thought that this would be, you know, it started off as just something to... Um, help cover some of the overheads on the unit that we were renting Mm -hmm. and then it just became a thing in its own right and and really took off and now I kind of just specialize in that and it's wild in the last kind of three years it's gone from almost nothing to um in well this year in fact I was nominated as as fashion photographer of the UK um I'm currently shortlisted for entrepreneur of the year um and we have all of our kit kindly supplied by Nikon as well so it's it's just exploded in the last year we've had some incredible clients um, we worked with the uh, Olympic swimming team uh, a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, it, it's just wild. And I never would have thought it would have gone like this. That's absolutely incredible. I feel like like you deserve an applause for all <laughs> that. Like it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, underwater photography, like I feel like we just need to kind of pause at that and just be like, okay, let's, let's run through this. <laughs> let's kind of, you know, let's break that down. So yeah. talk us through it. You know, what's your setup? How do you, how do you make that happen? Especially 
in the UK in a studio. <laughs> yeah, in the studio. So essentially we had this enormous tank built. We, we actually have uh, two tanks currently. Um, think of it like a massive fish tank. Uh, yeah. The one that we normally use for shooting is about three meters wide by two meters tall and two meters, um, sorry, three meters long, two meters wide and two meters yeah. high. Uh -huh. um, and it's just the right size that you can really stretch out in it and get some good images. Um, we've got another one that we must use for events, which is 10 meters long, it's enormous. Um, but because of the way that the studio has taken off, um, these, as I mentioned before, these tanks were used for events and were meant to travel. We now really don't need that. So we're going to be building a new one in the studio that's going to be absolutely enormous and big enough to build full sets in. Oh, wow. um, so yeah, it, it kind of started off with the tank. Um, we use a load of different lighting gear. So the tank has got portholes in it as well, which allow us to put lights in through different directions. And it's we can um, do a lot more with it than you could just, for example, in a swimming pool or um, out in the sea. And the, the main benefit of this really is that you don't necessarily need to be in the water with the model. So any okay. kind of camera gear you can use, I don't need to spend thousands on uh, underwater housing. And I think this is part of the reason why it's taken off so much as well with other people coming into the studio. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of work with film industry and obviously a lot of their cameras you can't necessarily take underwater. They're huge yeah. custom rigs. Um, and yeah, it's just gone from there. It's been it's been a wild journey. That's incredible. So let's talk technical then. Yeah, so, no I mean, this this blows my mind, I'll be honest. I've never seen anything like it. If for anyone that's listening that hasn't seen Kai's work, your tank space, aren't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. Like business name. Um, if you haven't seen it, you 100% need to like pause this podcast right now and go and, and, go and have a look at it because it's absolutely mental. But so let's talk through like logistics and technicals. Yeah. So is your preference when you're shooting, are you underwater shooting with them no. or are you shooting through the glass? I'm, I'm shooting through a large acrylic window. So uh -huh. the, the acrylic window is essentially the entire side of the tank. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't need to get up and close and I can kind of change my um, setup as I would in any normal studio shoot. Mm -hmm. So if I want to get up and close and, and do, you know, uh, home, cropped in portraiture, I absolutely can. If I want to do the full length, you know, big stretched out floaty stuff, then I can get right to the back and get the, the full wide look. Um, yeah, it's, it's great fun. I don't really need to have any kind of specialist kit either. Like yeah. If I wanted to, I could literally shoot with my phone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so let's talk from a customer's point of view then, a yeah. client's point of view. Obviously, you've got to be a swimmer. You've got to be happy in water to be to be doing. Um, and no, not necessarily. So you don't need to be able to swim well. We've had quite a lot of people come through. So this is one of the other things that we do. So we've had a lot of people that have got phobia of water and want to try and overcome it in a controlled environment. So it doesn't really matter if you can swim or not. Um, we work generally. We work with myself as a photographer, and then we've got a studio manager as well. We've also got a number of in-house models who have been with us more or less since the start, who are just incredible underwater. Yeah. And when we deal with people that don't have a lot of experience or a customer that's brand new to us, one of our models will essentially be at the back of the tank, giving them guidance uh, and talking them through exactly how to be posing, um, to go through different breathing exercises. Um, one of the main problems that we find, I mean, myself, I'm very floaty in there. Um, <laughs> I, I struggle to, to stay down. So we need to go through breathing exercises essentially to get rid of all of the air from your lungs yeah. so you can sink down um, and, and yeah. kind of be in the, the middle of the tank. It's like diving, I guess, right? You yeah. Know, when you, yeah, yeah. You're diving in the sea, you need to try and kind of exhale all the air out of your lungs so that you wait. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can you can kind of get down to the bottom. That's really interesting. So I'm interested in kind of how the shoot runs. So yeah. in terms of, you know, you've got your client in the water. How how long are they under there for? How long have you got to get that shot? I would imagine it's... Oh. We, we tend to go at people's own pace. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a really interesting one. And for me, it's a complete kind of level playing field. It doesn't matter how experienced you are as a model. Mm -hmm. If you've not done underwater stuff, it's so completely different. So we've had, for example, you know, models that have come down with Vogue magazine and not been particularly good. Um, and we've had, you know, just someone that's booked a photo shoot with us, never done anything like this before in their life and been just incredible. Uh -huh. And so it's really going at the pace of a model. So, for example, it's normally somewhere between 40 minutes and an hour that we shoot with somebody. Mm -hmm. It can go longer, uh, but we spend more or less the first half of that, just getting them used to being in the water, getting them all right underwater and getting used to the breathing techniques yeah. and then from that we can start working on poses and to be fair I, I don't tend to break my camera out until the second half 
Mm -hmm. um, and then we start working through the different images. There's a few different lighting setups that I go with. Um, so a lot of people that we work with tend to like the kind of natural singular overhead light mm -hmm. uh, that gives the, the beautiful sun, sunlight effect. Yeah. Uh, when the water starts moving, we tend to get big shafts of light coming through, which just mm -hmm. looks absolutely beautiful. Um, my personal favorite is using the portholes either side of the tank uh, to put fill lights through so we can fill out uh, a little bit of the highlights and a little bit of the, the shadows. And we can also, I do a lot of work with gels. So that's kind of where I chuck the gels through either side. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is kind of just using portholes and sometimes lighting from the front and no overhead light. Yeah. And that gives a really kind of out of this world effect because it doesn't look necessarily like it's in water. You're not, you don't look and go, oh yeah, that's deep water with the sun coming down. It just looks, you know, bizarre. Like something not off this planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> amazing so how do you how do you go about posing your couples or your you know your um your with, with that are great in difficulty so I, I imagine i'd get in that tank my hair would be all over my face like yep. it's very difficult it's a very difficult environment to control i guess because really you know what happens happens the water yeah. is what it is and i would imagine it's difficult to control that it absolutely is. But this is part of the reason why I love it, because everything, it, it, something different happens every single time. You, there is no real control over exactly what's going on, which means that, you know, in, in a photo shoot, I might get through easily a thousand photos in an hour um, just because you have to keep shooting to make sure that there's some decent ones running throughout, you know, when there's hair not going across their face. Um, so it's a combination of trying to teach the models to, to go through. We do a lot of stuff with dance poses. Mm -hmm. um, so um, as long as you've got kind of wide arms and pointy toes, normally you're good. Yeah. Um, and we work through a load of different poses that we've kind of got uh stacked with us we've got to have an ipad normally and we'll go through and just sort of show show them the image and go kind of like that they yeah. try it and then they come up again and then we give them advice until it gets to the point where we want it the most difficult thing that we found is actually communicating with the clients and the models underwater because they can't see out it's a really weird optical illusion where the front of the glass where i'm shooting from from the inside it's just black because i'm shooting from essentially a large blackout marquee that stops any kind of reflections on the glass Wow. Uh, and they also can't hear me underwater. Um, so it's well, when they're under, it's very much, you know, down to them to, they're to on their try own. and, <laughs> yeah, they're on their own in this. Um, so it's, it's having to give them instruction, getting them to go into the water and, and try and do the thing. And then when they come up, try and refine it until we get to a point where they're happy. And normally we can, we, I mean, we've never really had a shoot so far where people haven't got the images that we're after. Uh, we've had people who have had massive pho uh, phobias of water from childhood dramas. We had someone that almost drowned when they were little and had, you know, they wouldn't go in the ocean. They wouldn't go in a swim pool, but they came and did a shoot with us. And it was just, you you know an incredible experience wow that's absolutely phenomenal so i mean you've got a marketing background right yes so before you were a photographer you were in marketing so i mean your marketing game must be pretty strong <laughs> to just pull this idea out of nowhere and yeah. be so successful so what's your secret what are your tips so so for me it's it's quite obviously a niche thing that we offer mm -hmm. um and to be fair, we don't do a lot of B2C. We don't work with a lot of consumers. We work mm -hmm. with mostly other businesses. Um, and so my kind of main effort was to go out and build relationships with people in the industry. So I don't know if you know much about the film industry, but it's incredibly incestuous. Everyone knows everyone. <laughs> um, and my kind of main goal was to go out there and make as many people as possible aware that we exist and we are a thing in the hope that when someone goes... I, I really fancy doing, I've got a concept and I want to do something underwater. Someone will go, oh, I know a place. And it's it's gone absolutely wild. Like we invited uh, a load of people down for um, different shoots. We work with a lot of influencers in the industry mm -hmm. and we kind of do all of our marketing through word of mouth and building relationships. We've got people that have kind of sent us um, five to six referrals each um, as kind of filmmakers. And we always say to them, you know, do you want finders fees or do you want a percentage cut? And they're like, no, no, just bear it as mine next time we need like the studio for anything underwater. Just, you know, remember that we've sent you some work and give us a discount. And that's that's fine by me. Um, so yeah, it's really just building relationships with people and making sure that when they do come and work with us, that they have an amazing time and they get exactly the shot that they need. And then they keep coming back. So off the back of um, building, you know, a few referrals, we've just built our network and built our network until we know, you know, a lot of people in the film industry. Um, we've worked with everyone from uh, the same lighting crew that did James Bond Skyfall, and they know everyone. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, it was, that was a wild one, actually. We invited one person down who owns a YouTube channel because um, we thought, you know, he makes really good um, videos. It would be good promo for us. And he was going to shoot uh, with a large format underwater. Uh, sorry, not underwater. A large format Victorian bellows camera. In fact, this, I, I, again, I'm welcomed by your listeners to be proven wrong by this, but I think it was the world's first time that underwater images have been taken in colour using Victorian camera. Um, and he came down to shoot this video um, I didn't realise at the time that he was a, a massive kind of figurehead in the film industry down in London. And off the back of that, we've got so much work. So from my advice to, to anyone in kind of the, the niche photography area, if you're dealing with businesses, it's all about building relationships and not necessarily driving sales, but just making sure that people know that you, you exist. So when they need you, you're there. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, relationships are massive in what we do, aren't they? Even, yeah. you know, I can totally see business to business is, that's key yeah but for any photographer videographer you know any business really yeah I mean it, it goes the same happen. way with with photographers and videographers that work with consumers mm. from my perspective the uh, marketing perspective the most important thing for me is to be easy to find when somebody needs you mm. so you know working on your organic marketing getting the social media channels up these days I mean people overlook things like TikTok these days but it's mm. such a big tool to to drive people to your uh, website and then also working on seo like having decent search engine optimization is massively important we spent the first kind of year doing that with tank space so now if you search for uh, underwater photography studio in the uk we rank first almost every time yeah. so it's it's just getting that nailed down and then if you can afford to spending money on ads but i mean we started off doing that and didn't see a, a great result from it um it's kind of different for every business we've seen a lot more from uh, referrals and organic traffic than we have from from paid yeah definitely it's it's a wide old world marketing isn't it there's, oh, yeah. yeah you could you could tackle a million things I think for me I think it's always good to find you know find out what works for your business and for you and for your clients you know oh, where, absolutely. where do you underwater um you know clients reach out to places as instagram yeah. is it facebook is it seo like yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine myself typing into google underwater photography studio no. but i could totally see myself typing that into instagram underwater yep. photography yeah you know, absolutely it's... and i think for uh people that deal with consumers as well one of the biggest overlooked one is pinterest and people building mood boards on pinterest which is a, a massive thing so it's just a question of, of getting out there but my main kind of advice from a marketing perspective is to build a strategy um that tries a bit of everything and then do as much analysis on it as possible see where all your leads are coming from see where your conversions are coming from and then try and refine and refine until you've got kind of an always on campaign that you can run you know constantly um that's generating the most traffic and the most conversions yeah for sure i mean your work is it's unique in itself isn't it i mean <laughs> what you do is hugely unique but even then how you execute it is beautiful so what's your advice to photographers that are looking to make their work stand out like yours does? You know, how can they how can they make themselves seen? So from my perspective, this is quite a difficult one because it's personal to kind of everyone. Mm -hmm. What I would do is enter as many competitions as you possibly can and try and always, if there's the option to get your work critiqued. Mm -hmm. um, I have my you know own kind of personal things that I like and dislike in, in photography styles, wow. but I'm not a judge. I would probably recommend going to somebody that who's seen a huge amount of different photography styles and go to them and say, right, you know, how do I get better? How do I uh, make my work stand out? Um, as, as Yeah, just as many different people as possible. Because the problem is um, I'm not necessarily a figure of authority. I can say whether I personally like an image or not. But I, you know, I'm not infallible. My, my views could be wrong. There's some images that I really like that I know, you know other people don't. Um, I think from my perspective, not going too far on post-processing, um, but also doing some post-processing is a fine, yeah. a fine balance that we find. But I think the most interesting thing for me is we predominantly do uh, studio hire. We have a huge number of photographers that come through, uh, people booking out the studios, clubs and uh, societies and things like that. And one thing that I really love doing is seeing the difference in people's work, all taken using the same lighting setup, using the same models in the same facility. And there's such a wide variety of different kind of things that people generate. 
And it's always really interesting. So I, from my perspective on those ones, I like the ones where people have kind of gone for a, a natural look where they try and make it look like it's in deep ocean, you know, mm-hmm. spend a bit of time with the clone tool, getting rid of the bottom of the tank. Um, and then you get some people go completely the other direction and just make their own kind of pieces of art that don't look like, you know, anything in this world, but beautiful in their own right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult, <laughs> difficult question. <laughs> Absolutely. So you offer workshops, is that right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So we do a load of different events throughout the year. Um, We do workshops that are essentially uh, guided tuition by myself and our models. So our models will go through how to pose somebody underwater uh, and I'll talk through Sorry. I'll talk people essentially through how to get the most out of their time with us. Mm. So there's loads of different niggly things that people don't necessarily realize cause massive issues with shooting underwater and that are specific problems to just my studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for example, um, the way that the light refracts through the acrylic uh, of the window will overexpose your images and the light meter doesn't count for it, ah. um, which took a bit of trial and error to find the right thing. Yeah. So for example, underexposing by a couple of stops and then bringing it up in post is probably the best way to to work around that Mm -hmm. um but it's one of the things that quite a lot of people uh, often struggle with when they just come down as a group and don't necessarily have the tuition but yeah we do the workshops uh they tend to run for two hours at a time sometimes we do longer uh and it'll be a combination of shooting with our um tank set and we've got a brand new rain machine set as well so we've just built that you'll be seeing a lot of that on instagram coming up soon um again we're one of the few studios in the country that's got a big rain machine set um yeah yeah everything's all kind of new all the time um yeah we we don't like to stand still but yeah yeah, it doesn't sound like it (laughs) we we like to try and make things different for different people um so one of the things that i really enjoy doing with workshops is experimenting with different fabrics and how they work in the studio Mm -hmm. so we've got a a huge uh in-house wardrobe Uh, we've got about six seven different charity shops as soon as they get you know a big stockpile of ball gowns and dresses they give us a ring and we just go around all of them and pick them all up um so we experiment with you know the way that different uh fabrics the the way that uh, both the water and light interacts with them because different Mm -hmm. things do different things um we do a lot of experimentation with uh fabrics free fabrics in the tank as well um we've got one Again, if any of your listeners have ever been to uh, our studio, there's one piece of fabric that's getting fairly famous called Tony. Uh, he's got his own name, bless him. Uh, and it's because he's gold. So uh, Tony from the lead singer from Spandau Ballet. Yeah. Um, and Tony has literally been in maybe 30 music videos, just in the background of different things. He's been in so many different photo shoots because yeah. he's uh, neutrally buoyant, which basically means he just floats in the water and wherever you put it, it just stays which is beautiful and creates a really nice kind of rippling effect. So it's, it's kind of, there's in the workshops, a lot of experiment, experimentation with different things and asking um, the clients kind of what do they want to try and achieve from it? And then we work to help them get there. Cause mm. that's like, we've been doing this for kind of three years now and I don't think we've ever done the same shoot once it's everything is just completely different every single time yeah I was gonna say I can imagine every single day at work is very very different for you although yes. you're in the same setting you know every I guess that's the beauty of it really is every shoot although you're in the exact same tank yeah using the exact it's, same lighting using the exact same water yeah it's it can it's look wildly different. different and I think this is part of the reason why I've kind of uh, I'm I'm I quickly go in and out of enjoying things and, and, you know, I've done a lot of different hobbies and lots of different species, but this is one thing that I really think will kind of stick. And the main reason for that is because we do predominantly studio hire and we have loads of other people coming in with their own ideas and their own creation. Mm. And from my perspective, that's ideal for me. I can kind of focus on the marketing and the business and building the relationships. I don't necessarily have to shoot all the time, but when I see something that's really creative or that I really enjoy, I can break out my camera and go down and, and, shoot it and that for me is it instills I've still got the love of it it's still the creativity anytime that I want we can be like right let's try this idea and we've always got kind of you know different things that we're trying and we've just started putting in new backdrops into the tank because before it just looked like deep water it was just painted deep blue Uh but now we're experimenting with lots of different bits and pieces which is just you know absolutely great fun I can imagine that the workshops if they haven't already are going to absolutely explode when you, <laughs> you know when when they start to really come into their own I guess it's a yeah. really it's a whole nother business alongside everything oh else absolutely do, yeah it? um we do I mean a lot of the studio hires that we do are workshops that other people are putting on in our studio as well um yes. so we do 
if, if people we, we do our own normally once every other month or so is how often we do our own we keep them quite exclusive with me giving tuition on them yeah. uh we have one in september that's completely sold out it sold out uh, last month which was amazing uh and surprised we're, me. <laughs> <laughs> we're just scheduling another one for uh, october november time which is going to be a, an art nude day which is going to be amazing like that's probably one of my favorite things to shoot in the tank because it's just absolutely beautiful yeah. uh, especially with the kind of all the fabrics rippling around and yeah it's just stunning um but i think my next goal is to get better in there myself because I've, I've actually not only been in there a few times and we tend to only get our models to to go in rather than myself but uh you know i'll get there i love it i'm so blown away already by everything that you've that you've shared with us today i just I, I said to you um, before, but I, you know, I'm going to say it live on the podcast as well. I had no idea that you were in the UK. And when I saw yeah. your work, totally thought you were going to be in the US or something like that. You know, when you see these businesses that are so unique, like you've never yeah, yeah. seen anything like it. I just presume they couldn't possibly be in the UK, but actually it's in Nottingham. Yeah, like. of all places as well. <laughs> to be fair, we found that it's actually uh, quite a good location, Nottingham. We've, we found that it's unique enough that we, uh, we, I mean, we were originally thinking about building it in London, um, mm-hmm. but the overheads of running it in London would just be astronomical. And because it's so unique, we tend to find that people travel to us anyway. Um, we're currently ke- kind of keeping tally on where the furthest away our clients have come <laughs> from. Uh, we've had people literally from the Outer Hebrides come to us. We've had people from down in Cornwall. I mean, we had we quite regularly have people from Scotland come to our workshop. So literally just driving down for a couple of hours and then driving back. Um, but I think the record so far, I need to actually, you know, kind of go on Google Maps and, and measure it out. We had a, a music video shot by someone that flew him and his entire crew over from L.A., um, which was absolutely incredible and we've also done uh, a big bit of work with a bollywood production that flew over from india um which was you know absolutely wild and completely different to anything that we've shot before and, and yeah. rather than just uh, using the tank they built a whole set around the tank as well um which was great fun and they were shooting for a week so we we have such a good variety of, of customers that come and use it and never honestly never would have thought it would have taken off like this we would have got the the variety of people that we do yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like this next question is a bit of a silly one, but on. if you could start your career all over again, is there anything you'd change? No. So this is one I, I, I you know, I quite often reflect on things that have yeah. changed, things I've done, and I don't think so. So I um, made the kind of mistakes when I was younger in terms of not necessarily focusing on the photography like it was a business. I just tried to turn it from something, you know, that was a hobby into a job. And it's, you know, actually a very difficult transition. It's not something that's easy and you have to put a huge amount of work and effort into it. Mm -hmm. So having that opportunity to go out and then work in lots of different areas and kind of build up my um, business background and then come back into photography has put me probably in the best possible stead to to make it into a, a, a successful business. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? I think it's so easy to run with a passion and run with a hobby yeah. and just go, you know, it'll organically turn into a business. It'll just happen itself. It'll just become <laughs> a business. Um, and it's so easy to think that way, but there's so much involved, isn't there? And I mean, I guess, yeah. especially with what you do, is it that it's so unique that, you know, there's probably no other business out there like it for you to not, take not really, no. From. I, th- I think it's probably going to be quite a controversial opinion, but from my perspective, I think the best bit of advice or the best kind of thought that I can give to anyone in the kind of same sort of position of, of looking to go into a business is that from for me, you have to be better at business than you are at photography. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's such an important thing. And often people don't consider it. I know lots and lots of hugely talented, creative photographers that are far better than I am that are not making a living from it. That are, You know, they, they work part time in, in relatively uh, low paid jobs and they do it as a hobby um, whilst trying to, to make it into a job. And it and, and vice versa. I know a lot of, of fairly mediocre professionals that are making a huge amount of money. Um, so it's, it kind of goes both ways. And it's, it's making sure that you can do both sides of it. Yeah, it's finding that balance, isn't it? For yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you might be able to offer our listeners a piece of advice before you go, something that's made a big difference to your personal life or your business life. Um, a bit of a nugget of inspiration, if you like. <laughs> to be fair, I think I covered it a little bit just then. So from my perspective, if you're going to go or if you want a career in photography, to put as much time and passion and energy into learning the business side as you do learning the photography side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think having had 
um, kind of the experience of both sides of that, coming from a background of, of being a hobby photographer and trying to make it into uh, a full-time job and honestly failing. I, I didn't because I didn't appreciate the business side of it. And then being able to go away and spend the time working on you know my career in terms of building up the business elements and then bringing it back into photography and reapplying it has been you know incredibly important yeah and so spending that time and effort you don't need to necessarily go out and be trained I've never been formally trained in business I've just you know put the time and effort into learning it there are you know a huge amount of really good mentors out there there are a huge amount of books I mean I I went through probably a year of reading a a whole book every other day uh, all just business stuff um and trying to learn as much as I possibly can, you know, get into TED Talks, get into trying to find people in the industry that you look up to and respect, not just because of their photography, but the way that they do business. Um, And then try and reapply it yourself. And I think the the other thing is don't necessarily worry about being, uh, failing at anything. From from my perspective, failing at something or making a mistake is never a failure or a mistake unless you don't learn from it. Mm -hmm. You need to, you know, learn from your mistakes, analyze them, find out why it is a mistake and then go back and go, okay, I'll do this differently. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. If our listeners would like to find out a little bit more about you or get in touch, Kai, how can they do that? Sure. So uh, my website is just tankspace.co.uk and on all social media, we are Tankspace Official. Amazing. That's superb. Well, this has been an episode like no other. I have (laughs) absolutely loved it. So thank you so much for taking the time to come and explain a little bit more about what you do to everybody. Um, But yeah, hopefully you're you're not too far away from me. So maybe I'll uh, I'll come and have a go uh, at shooting in the tank sometime. (laughs) lovely thanks so much Kai I'll catch you soon see you later bye bye okay guys that is everything from me today I hope your minds are utterly blown because I know mine is um if you would like to see the show notes as always you can head to www.studioninja.co forward slash episode 41 please don't forget to rate us on the podcast platform that you're listening on a little bit of love goes a very long way I'll see you next time Thanks for listening to this episode of NinjaCast, brought to you by Studio Ninja. Beautifully designed and super easy to use, Studio Ninja will help you manage your leads, clients, shoots, invoices, contracts, workflows, and so much more. To learn more or start your 30-day free trial, go to www.studioninja.co.